and anwar St. Rhoda School for the Visually Impaired, Anwar, is a special public primary school run by Franciscan Sisters of St. Anne under the Catholic Archdiocese of Kisumu. The school was founded by missionaries, Franciscan Sisters of St. Anne, in 1961. It is situated in Game Sub County, Sea County, about 450 kilometers from Nairobi, Kenya. It is one of the primary schools in Kenya offering education to visually impaired children. It caters for physical, spiritual, educational, social, emotional, and psychological needs of learners with visual impairment ranging from pre-primary 1 to standard 8, drawn from all parts of the country. The school boasts of having produced many intelligent persons with visual impairment who are making positive contributions to the community and the country at large, some of whom are currently teaching in the school, like Mr. Gabriel Cage, Mr. Alex Otieno, Madame Jane Juma, Madame Agatha Tino, but I made a new just to mention but a few. The school follows regular primary school curriculum and co curricular activities offered in the country, and in addition, braille, activities of daily living, orientation and mobility lesson. It has a vocational training center for those learners who cannot cope with the regular curriculum. In the year 2011, the school started a secondary school section. Nico Aousa Special Secondary School for Learners with Visual Impairment, which sat their first KCSE examination in 2014. The secondary section has since been moved to Mondo. St. Oda School currently has a teaching staff of 25 teachers and a non-teaching staff of 32. The total population of learners is 251. The current head teacher is Sister Esther Mead. She tells us about some of her roles in the school. My name is Sister Esther Mitch Odipo, a Franciscan sister of St. Anne, Luak, the ninth head teacher of St. Oda School for the Visually Impaired. Allow me to mention some of my responsibilities and roles as the head teacher. First, I have to teach the lessons on the timetable I have to participate in co-curricular activities. I have to keep records of learning on learning in the classroom. I have to ensure that our mission as a school and vision is achieved, guided by our motto, which is opportunity, not sympathy. I have to set pace and direct the drawing of schedules for operation within the school. I have to frequently convene and conduct staff meetings. And this we do three meetings in a term. I have to offer management and control of school finances and stores. I also offer management and motivation of human resource. This is by delegating duties to the deputy head teacher and other staff members. I hold in meetings, information meetings with staff and students. I have, as a head teacher, ensured that I give a listening ear through guidance and counseling of those in need within the school. I register candidates with NEC. I conduct admission of learners, ensuring that we follow the right processes of admission. And as a sister, I have to ensure that our staff and students are spiritually nourished because this is the core. And in summary, among other many responsibilities, I have to offer leadership in the school. Leadership of Madame Mildred Mimi and Mr. Oscar Amo, the Scouts and the Movement in St. Moda has continued to actively grow in strength, molding and nurturing the learners' talents, character and behavior to make them responsible members of the society. The Scouts and Girls lead the flag-raising ceremony during the school assembly 
every Monday and Friday, and also during school official function. They at the same time act as peer counselors among other learners. They also undertake <laughs> services and organize firefighting for other learners. St. Otto's Special School for Learners with Visual Impairment, like all other schools for learners with visual impairment in the country, follows the regular curriculum with slight adaptation to cater for the needs of learners with visual impairment. The school offers the new competency-based curriculum, CBC, from primary 1 to grade 3, and the old 844 curriculum from uh, standard 4 to standard 8. Kilogenga, the deputy teacher, of St. Oda School for the Visually Impaired. I have been the deputy of this school for now three years. As the deputy of the school, I'm charged with the responsibility of instilling discipline and ensuring that curriculum is implemented as required. Now, there are a number of departments under the watch of the deputy, and these include academics, student leadership, staff welfare, just to mention a few. I also want to say that as a school, we have had a very cordial working relationship with all these departments, coupled with the cooperation among pupils, and this has resulted into improved performance both in academics and co-curricular activities. Then we also have a few challenges that we have to cope with every day and these include negative attitude of some learners towards academic work, lack of time management. Some learners also have persistent behavior problems but we have to deal with this uh, accordingly so that they are in line. Finally, uh, I would wish to say that I have the conviction that we can achieve the envisaged ideal school for the visually impaired we all dream of if we all work in unity as a team. Early childhood education is offered in the school at pre-primary 1 and pre-primary 2. Madame Violeta Nyaleso, a teacher at pre-primary 1 and pre-primary 2 yeah, gives us more details about the classes. Primary school. In our school here, we have 
two classes, pre-primary one and pre-primary two. In pre-primary one, we are having 12 learners, and in pre-primary pre two, we are having 14 learners. So in this class where you are, this is pre-primary two. And we are covering 10 activity areas in this class. The first activity area is ADN, activities of daily living skills. The second one is orientation and mobility. The third one is brain. The fourth is language activities. The fifth is mathematics activities. The seventh is environmental activities. The eighth one is psychomotor and creative, which is having three activities in one, which is creative, music and movement, and P. And then the last one is CRE. So this is our class. You can see how we have arranged the materials. materials to ensure that learners are correctly placed Visual assessment of learners is very important. The Law Vision Assessment Center is charged with this important task, as Madam Agatha Atieno, the head of the center, explains. I'm Madam Agatha Atieno. In the Law Vision Department, we are 13 members of the staff. Those are the members we work with. What do we do? We assess learners who would wish to join the primary school and vocational center. We also place, after we have assessed and they have been admitted, we also place them in various classes. Uh, we organize for the doctor's visit. Doctors do come every term or termly, once in a term, and uh, doctors from Sabatia for the treatment of the learners. We induct pupils who have been given low vision assistive optical or non-optical devices. We also have a record of those devices. We keep them. It is our duty to induct parents or especially the newly, uh, the, 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 the parents of the newly uh, admitted children so that they accept their situation. The school partners with Sabatia Eye Hospital under the sponsorship of CPM provide regular eye care, eye treatment, visual assessment and provision of optical devices to learners. The doctors from the hospital visit the school once every term to screen learners, provide medication and also recommend referrals to their facility for learners who need specialized services like eye surgery. To measure the outcome of the learning process and check on the suitability of instructional methods applied during the learning process, evaluation of learners at various stages is important. Madam Elizabeth Ongoro, the teacher in charge of the examination department, talks about administration of examination in the school. So in our school, we normally take two exams according to the policy, that is midterm exams and end-term exams. Apart from 
that we also have external exams that is done by the candidates to prepare them for the main exam. So um, the process of exams in the school, we normally purchase the papers. After purchasing the papers, we give them to the panel heads who distribute them to the panel members. Then the members moderate the papers to suit learners who are totally blind. After that, they braille, come a form, and then bring them to the examination office. After that, they give the exams to the learners. They monitor the, the session, that is the exam period, as learners sit for the papers. Once that is done, the marks are submitted to the exam department where we analyze and release to the learners. So the main reason why we have exams in our school is to monitor the progress of the learners. That one also helps the teachers to know where learners still have weaknesses and where there is need to be helped, for the learners to be helped. So uh, during the main exam, that is KCPE, we normally receive materials from NEC and the questions are not very much different from those that are done by the regular schools. There are slight difference, that is moderation of the diagrams to the totally blind learners. So that's all about our department. The health and environmental department is charged with responsibility of ensuring the physical, emotional, and psychological well-being of learners is taken care of. It, is also, it also ensures that the school environment where they live is clean, safe, and conducive. Mr. Nyadenge, the teacher in charge, tells us more. We do a lot of activities in the school. We encourage our children to be very healthy because when a child is healthy is when a child can perform in class. Uh, we mostly take note of sick children and then they are taken to the sick bay where they are treated before they are taken to any other referral area prescribed by the school nurse. At the same time, when they are in the sick bay, they are treated, uh, their health is being monitored, and at the same time, there are also some children put in charge of reporting cases of sickness in the classes or in the dormitories. And if that one is seen, any case should, uh, is being reported to the uh, nurse so that the nurse can take charge. At the same time, in the sick bay, there are people with special problems and the nurse is very busy doing her work there and the medicine are being offered there uh, in the evening before they go to sleep. At the same time, whatever is being done in the school is done through the courtesy of uh, the administration responsible for buying the drugs for the children. Some are epileptic, some are having multi problems, and therefore it's not only one. That is special, but we have quite a number of them having various problems. And as they are being treated there, we ask the parents that are having NHIF cards to send us copies so that for every referral, we can at least take your child to any preferred hospital for treatment in case there is. And we have been doing so well here, and we are urging our parents at least to take that commitment to be part of them. And when children go home, if at all... They... Physical development of learners with visual impairment is taken seriously at St. Oda Special School. This is done by ensuring that learners actively participate in games and sporting activities. Welcome to Games and Sports Department in St. Oda School for the Visually Impaired. I'm called John Ligondo in charge of games and sports department 
and with me is my colleague, Madam Milde Donyimbe. In this department, we have quite a number of colleagues, and uh, games and sports or, or perform a, a very important role in the holistic development of a child. Or in this department, we do or athletics, and uh, in the athletics we do quite a number of things. We do the races, we do the jumps and the throws, and also we do the ball games. And in the ball games we have uh, or the, the, the football, we have the volleyball, we have the netball, and we have uh, the unique games for the visually impaired like uh, the goal ball, the showdown, and uh, the, the, the food song. Uh, apart from uh, that, uh, or among uh, the races that we do, we have the races for the low vision, and we have uh, the races for the totally blind. The totally blind races are uh, guided, and that means that uh, for a totally blind to run, he or she is supposed to be or guided by sighted person and have the rules that uh, governs uh, the guiding. Uh, apart from that, uh, also in the pros, they do uh, the, 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 the short put, the javelin, and uh, even uh, the discus, uh, both the totally blind and uh, the low vision. And uh, I want to say that uh, games and sports is a very important uh, uh, co-curricular activity that uh, really uh, helps in the development of learners that uh, are uh, normal in quotes and those with special needs. Otherwise, I want to thank you so much for uh, visiting this department and uh, a lot more uh, may come later on. Thank you. Music department is one of the most active departments in St. Oda Special School. The school continues to nurture musical talents of learners by involving them in singing, dancing, and playing of various musical instruments. St. Oda Instrumental Band and Choir performs in various public functions within the region. They also take part in the annual Kenya National Music Festivals where they have continued to be the reigning champions of the case. The department is headed by Mr. Alex Mutieno, who is an alumni of the school, assisted by other members of staff. Welcome to Enable Assistive, Assistive Technology Computer Labs. I'm Mr. Shadra Kotieno, the lead instructor at the Toda School for the Blind. Here we have two labs. We have the desktop lab, where we are right now. And we have also another lab for the portable computer devices, like the iPad. We have also laptop. Here we teach basic computer skills. That is installation to computer, Windows, Microsoft Word also. On top of that, we also train on employable skills like web design and simple programming languages. The program is sponsored by Enable Generation, which run the program in seven schools across the country. The key challenges that we are facing in this program is that the syllabus that we are using is adopted, but there is no um, uh, a well-established computer syllabus for the visually impaired within the current curriculum. And it is our urge that the developers, all those who are mandated in the development of curriculum, also include the visually impaired adaptation on computer in their curriculum. Thank you. 
Other than having challenges with their vision, learners with albinism also require special care due to their delicate skin. The school has put in place a department that is mandated to offer support to learners with albinism, headed by Mr. Henry Law, who tells us about what they do in the department. I'm Henry Law, a teacher in charge of albinism in the school. So, uh, with albinism, as you understand, is that uh, a lack of coloration of the skin, that pigment, and therefore our role in the school is to ensure that uh, we advise the children on how to take care of themselves as concerns their skin. Uh, another thing, we also advise them on how to put on. We also provide them with the sunscreen lotion, which they apply on the skin uh, at different times of the day, not in the morning, at noon, or in the evening. So uh, we also charge with the responsibility of, of advising the parents on how to take care of uh, their children with the reason. So the parents should ensure that their children put on well when they are at home. Then we also advise them to buy for them those long, long sleeved uh, shirts uh, or blouses and hats which cover their, their heads. Learners' access to clean, safe, adequate, and reliable water is paramount. The school has invested and continue to invest a lot of resources towards provision of water. Harvesting of rainwater in the school during rainy season and storing it in tanks is a major boost towards ensuring that the school is water secured throughout the year. This has greatly improved sanitation and health of learners. Print library stores print books that are normally borrowed and used by learners who are low vision. Teachers' reference materials in print are also stored in the print library where teachers can access them and use them during lesson preparation. Print library provides a conducive reading environment for learners during their library lesson and also during their extensive reading during their free time. Madam Millicent Miruka, the teacher in charge, explains more. Uh, Millicent Miruka, in charge of print library. We are normally two. I'm assisted by Mr. Charles Nyandaya. So in the print library, we usually store print books to learners who are uh, low vision usually come to the print library to borrow books. Teachers also come to the print library to borrow books for reference. We also store we also store storybooks and other print materials. So our learners usually come to the print library during their free time to read storybooks and other mater print materials like the newspaper. Thank you. School finances are collected and managed efficiently following well-structured accounting procedures. Mr. Ken Opudo, the school accountant, explains. My name is uh, Kennedy Oumo Opudo. I'm the school accountant. Uh, my key role uh, is to uh, account for every coin received by, by the school. Of course, uh, working close with the head teacher uh, to enable the smooth running of the school activities. Our main uh, source of income are uh, government grant and school fee. But therefore, we ask the parents to pay school fee promptly to enable smooth operation of the school. Again, our key challenge, my key challenge in this office is, uh, is to is the mode of payment. I request uh, our parents to to pay the school fee through the bank, but not cash, to enable the easy accounting of. Foundation class is a very special class within a special school, as Mr. Taya, the class teacher, explains. 
a toddler. And then at the time, I'm a teacher in St. Order in charge of a foundation class. What is a foundation class? Foundation class is a special class within a special school. It's a class that admits children that are, cannot benefit academically whatsoever. The children that are really admitted in this class are the children who are having cerebral palsy, children who are multiple, who are mentally challenged, the deaf blind, severe autism, multiple impairment, and profound disability. This category of children cannot benefit in all ways academically, and therefore they have to operate to mean a normal in the society. When they are admitted in this class, they are taught subjects like sensory motor and creative activities to deceive, to make them, to make their motor operate smoothly. They are taught orientation and mobility, since this is a school for children with visual impairment. They are taught pre literacy skills that introduces them to functional mathematics. They are taught activities of daily living, skills and religious activities. This is to enable them to operate independently and not really to depend on the parent, guardian, or the caretaker in, and, uh, in uh, helping them do normal things. They also taught communication, social, and key literacy skills to help them know how to communicate with the society. The children who are, in, who are admitted in this class, they are they are not taught to be given certificates, there is no certification, but a part of them who can benefit in artisan, artisan courses are admitted in the Christian class to be taught piecemeal work, while the rest are taught activities of daily living to enable them to operate independently within the society, so as to enhance their privacy and individual self-esteem. St. Order School also runs a vocational training center offering various training courses for visually impaired, deaf blind, hearing impaired, and intellectually impaired young girls and boys who can otherwise not benefit effectively from the normal school curriculum. Some of the courses offered at the center include sewing and embroidery, knitting and crocheting, weaving and tapestry, hairdressing and beauty therapy, agriculture, catering, food and nutrition, and housekeeping, among others. All the courses are geared towards empowering the graduates, making them self-reliant and useful members of the society who can positively participate in national development. The center is headed by Madam Middle Ajwan, assisted by Mr. Morris
The school has initiated some projects that aims at supplementing its sources of income and at the same time cutting down on its expenditure, especially on food, being a boarding school. Some of the projects include a dairy farm, vegetable and food garden. The school farm is managed by environmental and health department led by Mr. Nicholas Nyadenge and Madam Violeta Jales, assisted by other members of the staff. Being a boarding school, security of learners, teachers, support staff, and school property is paramount. The school has continued to enhance its security by investing in security measures like construction of perimeter wall around the school, locking and manning school gates, betting of all visitors at the gate before entry, constant night patrols within the school by the school security officers led by Mr. Anthony Oturi, among other measures. <laughs> Apart from the many successes that the school has continued to have over the years through provision of unmatched excellent services to learners with visual impairment, the school faces some major challenges that need urgent intervention. Sister Me, the head teacher, shares some of those challenges. Among our challenges are the following. The biggest challenge we experience in school is inadequate financial support from the parents and from the Ministry of Education through the government grant. I wish to report that right now we have school arrears of over 4.9 million. The second challenge is the very expensive and scarce teaching learning materials for braille readers. We also lack modern equipment such as Mbosa. With the acquisition of this equipment, we shall reduce the cost of materials. We have a challenge of the inability of learners to have enough personal effect. This is contributed to by the poverty level of most of our parents. Another challenge goes to our support staff, the inability to pay gratuity after retirement. Right now we have six retirees that have gone home with no payment. And this comes after long time of service to these children and we really feel it. Another challenge is on the construction of secure payment for learners with visual impairment. With good and secure payment, we shall improve on the orientation and mobility and will reduce the injuries that are acquired by these learners. The perimeter wall is on and we still have a challenge of constructing the remaining 600 meters. This will surely improve our security for our learners. The construction of a spacious dormitory for the young girls and the medium girls is a challenge. The enrollment is high and the dormitory used is congested. We have another challenge on the construction of a brain library. We have the brain books are very expensive. And once they are bought or purchased, they need to be secured. So if we manage to put up a braille library, 
we shall have secured this. We have another challenge of frequent power surge and power outage. We have suffered for a long time when our electronics are burned. Another challenge is on the health status of our learners. Most of our learners are having chronic health status. This affect our, our general performance. The aging structures that we have, the school was started in 1961, and you can imagine how old the structures are. They need serious renovation. The frequent inflation of prices in the market affect us so much due to the limited funds that we have. And I want to, I want to thank very much those well-wishers that have come to our aid. Mm. So I believe that with all these challenges, if we had helped to face and overcome them, our services will be much better. Thank you. Lack of vision presents major challenges in the learning processes. This is because most learning takes place through the visual channel. St. Order School for the Visual Impaired has over the years continued to ensure that learners with visual impairment get quality education just like their sighted peers, which is not only one of their fundamental rights but is guaranteed in the Kenyan constitution. The school captured this very well in its vision and mission, guided by its motto opportunity, not sympathy. We welcome all of you to journey with us through this noble duty because together we can ensure that learners with visual impairment are given equal opportunity and support to enable them realize their full potential so that they can be productive citizens of our beloved country, Kenya. Long lives and honor. Thank you for watching.